you've probably heard about how this drug treats diabetes and helps with weight loss. But some users say it's also helped them to stop binge eating and to curb other unhealthy behaviors. So why do type 2 diabetes drugs like Ozempic have this unexpected side effect? Well, it turns out that it has less to do with this and more to do with that. And that's leading to a lot of excitement about using these meds for substance abuse disorders and other conditions that affect the brain. If these drugs actually turn out to be effective, that could have huge implications for public health. Let's dive in. The active ingredient in drugs like Ozempic mimics the hormone GLP-1, which helps with regulating insulin and sugar levels. That's what makes it effective for type 2 diabetes. In addition to the gut, it's also produced by the brainstem, which regulates breathing, heartbeat, and nausea. But GLP-1 affects activity throughout the brain, including areas involved in memory, decision-making, rewards, and impulse control. Injectable versions of GLP-1 have been shown to affect decision-making in animals. And neuroscientists think that's what's happening in people, too. GLP-1 drugs affect behavior in two major ways. They decrease the feel-good vibes you get from eating a fried chicken sandwich or having a cold beer. Treats like these release dopamine and activate the brain's reward centers. It's also how drugs like nicotine and opioids work and why they can be addictive. But when GLP-1 interacts with the brain's reward regions, the pleasurable effects of dopamine go down. And they make you less prone to seek out and indulge in these rewards, even when you encounter things that remind you of them. Which leads us to the second way these drugs impact behavior, improving impulse control. GLP-1 also promotes the activity of neurons in the hippocampus. This brain region's claim to fame is memory formation, thanks to a patient called HM. In the 1950s, his hippocampus was removed during brain surgery, and after that, he couldn't form new memories. The hippocampus is also important in impulse control and decision-making. Neurons in the hippocampus turn on other neurons in the medial prefrontal cortex, leading to more executive control and less impulsive behavior. In one experiment, rats had to wait 20 seconds to press a lever that released a sugary, fatty pellet. What the researcher described as the rat equivalent of a donut hole. Sometimes they couldn't. They kept hitting the lever before the 20 seconds were up because they wanted the treat so much especially if they were hungry. But when the rats were injected with exenatide, a GLP-1 drug similar to Ozempic, they were better at waiting, even when they were hungry. That effect went away if the researchers disrupted the signaling between the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex. Researchers think something similar is going on with people. Patients are eating less, in large part because they experience less motivation and cravings to eat. And they're reporting similar disinterest in drinking when they're taking drugs like Ozempic. How effective they turn out to be long-term for substance use disorders is still TBD. But there are several ongoing clinical trials, and some of the data look promising. When people stop taking these meds, their weight tends to bounce back. And a patient told the journal that once they stop taking exenatide, they also resume drinking. Another concern is whether the changes in motivation and reward could lead to depression. The researchers I talked to said none of the animal studies suggests that. But neuroscientists don't have a full picture of how long-term use of these drugs can alter the structure and function of the brain. The animal studies only last for days or weeks. And in humans, researchers just don't have that kind of data yet. One consolation is that some research suggests that GLP-1 promotes brain health. That's why GLP-1 drugs are being studied as potential treatments for conditions where brain cells die, like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. These are two of the most common neurodegenerative disorders. Parkinson's affects about 1 million people in the U.S. alone, and Alzheimer's more than 6 million. There aren't a lot of treatment options, so if GLP-1 drugs turn out to be effective against them, that would be a game changer. Whether it's for substance abuse or neurodegenerative conditions, cost will be an issue. Drugs like Ozempic are expensive. And expanding the population of patients who take these drugs would add significant costs to an already financially bloated healthcare system. 